Um, so we'll start with a roadmap. Uh, this is the Ethernet Alliance uh, roadmap. I'm, I'm on the board of the Ethernet Alliance. And one of the challenges that we have um, in the Alliance is explaining what the heck is going on with Ethernet. Ethernet used to be this great, nice, very localized technology used in, in the LAN environment. And since then, it's kind of exploded. And it's exploded because of its success in a lot of different markets. And so every year or every couple of years, we put out a new roadmap. And it's getting harder and harder to do. Before, it was very simple. We just sort of said, we're going 10 gig, then we're going 40 gig, then we're going 100 gig. Now it's kind of spread out. So it became a speedometer. But, but the key point um, to really get out of this is, is, is different markets. Right? So for enterprise, this is a traditional um, starting point of, of Ethernet. You know, it's, it's you know, working up in speeds. This, is, you know, this arc here is sort of in the near term, and this is in the, uh, going out a couple of years. And it's showing that you know, the speeds are going up, as you expect. But then you move into the different markets like the, the cloud space and, and the service provider space. They're obviously at higher speeds now, and, and they're pushing to even, even higher speeds. But we're also seeing Ethernet moving down um, into lower speeds. Uh, when you get into automation, you get into automotive, um, it, it's just moving everywhere. Um, so, so it's just driving a lot of things. So it, it used to be very simple for us. We'd say Ethernet's going in, you know, it started out at 10 meg, 100 meg, 1 gig, 10 gig. That was a very linear world for those of us that spent all our time in Ethernet, um, thinking this was simple. And, and it's got to the point where in the first 35 years of Ethernet, the standard, um, six new data rates came along. And then in just recently, six new data rates came in in a span of two years. And this was really to do with all these different markets all wanting to get um, Ethernet solutions available to them, but all having different points of optimization that they were trying to go do. So, you know, we, we've seen this kind of linear, this is, you know, the driven, you know, driving up all the way up to 400 gig E, and we'll spend a lot of time talking about things going over there, but um, you see a lot of things going, you know, pushing down now, um, things like uh, server I.O., 25 gig, 50 gig. Uh, you're seeing wireless access points now pushing down to two and a half gig and, and to five gig just to find those optimized points. Um, so in terms of, you know, what's going on, IEEE uh, is where a lot of this Ethernet stuff is standardized. Um, we'll talk more about there's consortiums that come up. There's a 25 gig, 50 gig E consortium that's, that's reared its head, and that was one of the early definitions of 25 gig E before IEEE came along. Um, and then there's all these MSAs, multi-source agreements, and we'll talk a lot about those, but they're typically, uh, the way to think about it generally is the IEEE defines um, the foundational piece, the, the, the Ethernet Mac, and and, and, the, and the signaling, and then all these MSAs and consortiums typically define implementations like what's a form factor, the, the pluggable module you have, or things like that. That, of course, is a rule that is broken many times, so we'll try and explain that um, uh, as well. Okay, so um, the obligatory what's going on in the markets slide. Um, so I spend a lot of my time worrying about 400 gigi, and I'll be talking a lot about 400 gigi. Um, and, and that's because the, the cloud customers are, are generally pushing the technology there, and that's where a lot of the technology innovation is happening. It was relevant to, even if you're not in that space, it's relevant to you, though, because that technology then comes in, and it pushes down into the lower speeds, and it, and it uh, drives down a lot of cost optimization, a lot of integration, things we can go do. It's also relevant because you know, whether you're at one gig today and you're migrating to 10 or to 25, you, you have a forward compatibility concern. You, you have infrastructure in your networks. Um, do you have a path going forward to eventually you will be going up in these speeds? And so that's a lot of um, what we consider about as well. Can we make sure that we have solutions and not strand certain fiber types um, if, if a user wants to go above and beyond there? Okay. Um, so I talk a bit about um, what's going on in, in, the, in the data centers today in terms of traffic. This is where there's a lot of noise, a lot of attention, and this is focusing a lot of the um, technology teams and suppliers within the optic space as to what they're trying to build and, and why they're trying to do it. So Cisco, we have this uh, visual networking index that we publish all the time. Um, the, the later report, the, the latest report on the global cloud index is sort of predicting that in 2021, there's gonna be 20.6 zettabytes of traffic flying around. Um, what's very interesting is, is when you look in and look at the breakdown of that traffic, um, you obviously have a lot of traffic that's going just in and out of the data center, but it's a small fraction 
of the whole, like 15% going out to the users, going into the data center. Um, you have another about 14% that's you know, connecting the data centers together. That's kind of internal traffic used for you know, replication, uh, content distribution. And then the, the biggest piece is, is what's actually happening within the data center. Right? And that's just machine-to-machine -machine traffic it's going, we call it east-west traffic. Um, and that's, you know, in, in this uh, latest uh, report, estimated to be about 85% of the traffic. Um, because of that massive amount of, of um, traffic that's going on there, um, there's a massive amount of interconnect within the data center. And a, lot of, a lot of this is driven by sort of the leaf spine architecture that, that the cloud users are doing. This allows you to allows them to install equipment quickly. It makes it scalable. It's a, it's a, a very defensible uh, network topology. But the consequence of this is there's a lot of interconnect. And so when you look at the cost of, from a capital expenditure within these data centers, it's now that the optics is, is the number two spend. Obviously, the servers are number one. There's, there's a ton of servers. But the optics is the number two spend. And so all of this in here, there's just a massive amount of uh, focus here on trying to get the cost down, and and since those customers right now are pushing towards 400 gig, that's where the lot of attention is. But since 400 is built up from 100 gig or for 50 gig, it drives the cost of those technologies down, and consequently that pushes uh, everywhere. Um, I've got a bullet here, but I think I'll catch up on the next slide. But a lot of this east-west traffic now, so this is you know a, a generic picture of a data center, you have Leap, you have Spine, you have a lot of interconnect going in between. This allows people to do the scalability to add, add, add uh, scale very easily by putting in um, extra equipment. Um, one of the consequences that we're seeing that's really affecting the optics industry right now is um, the amount of bandwidth that they want to put in a data center is exceeding the power footprint that they can actually put in a single building. Um, so typically, uh, some of the um, customers I talk to, they talk about a, a, a 32 megawatt footprint, and they put as much equipment as they can into that footprint, and when they can't get more in it, they have to build up another building and put it somewhere else. And so what happens is this data center is sometimes distributed across multiple buildings within a regional area. Um, they, they can't spread them too far apart because they have latent, latency concerns because they're working within their data center. Um, but what it means now is while we're trying to figure out how to cost reduce all of this optics that fits within the building, now we're trying to figure out how to cost reduce all the optics that maybe goes up to 100 kilometers as well. And that's, that's a new transition that's happening in, in the industry right now that's causing a lot of people uh, to work hard to come up with solutions. Um, I don't want to go through the whole chart here. Um, I think everyone, it's, it's just another way of saying exactly what we've already said. Um, the key point is, is this different, depending on where you are and what kind of network you're building, you're dealing with different speed challenges at different times, right? So if you're, if you're a top four cloud, uh, you're, you're trying to figure out how to do 400 gig right now. If you're um, in an enterprise space, you're thinking about how do I rise up to 100 gig. Um, all of this is just related, though, because as I said, these technology innovations that are coming forward largely to drive the, the 400 gig are, are trickling down, and, and we'll talk a lot about um, what's going on there. Okay, so um, I think I probably said all this already, but within the data center, what's, what's really going on? Obviously, there's a mix of fiber types. If you're one of these sort of top four cloud types, um, they've been very vocal in the last number of years saying single mode only. I, I don't want to talk about anything else in my data center. I will rip that. Um, I rip my fiber infrastructure out and just put in what's the best thing. Um, that's actually changing. Um, some of them are now talking back onto multi-mode again. Is it, is it cheaper to do multi-mode in the right places? Um, obviously, there's a lot of data centers that do have multi-mode in them uh, outside of the top four. So you have to think, you know, what's my forward connectivity path there when I go into 10 gig and do I, how do I get to 40, 50, 100, even up to 400 gig with, with multi-mode? Um, so, 20-something years ago, I was working in a different company. We were working on multi-mode fiber, and we, we ran into a lot of problems with it. And at the time, we said, oh, that's it. Multi-mode fiber is dead. And this is when we were trying to solve gigabit Ethernet. And we said, multi-mode fiber is dead, you know, single mode only. And that was, uh, I think, 25 years ago. 
we got that really wrong. So the only thing I, I've, I've learned from this is never bet against infrastructure. If it's there, if people want to use it, we'll figure out solutions for it, and, and that's carried on. Um, I think the other thing I want to mention on this was what I talked about before was, was these data centers right now are, are breaking up into these, into these virtual uh, data centers. We've got multiple buildings. And so um, the other interesting aspect is obviously when you're trying to connect between the buildings, you're, you're probably in a fiber uh, poor environment, um, whereas within a building you're probably in a very fiber rich environment. And so that um, forces us to come up with different solutions, but again, with the massive kind of volume and cost pressure that we had before. 